NBA 2K My League fans, I am back with another NBA 2K My League video. And in this video, we're going to talk about system proficiency. We're going to talk about what system proficiency is, why it's important, give you some tips on how to choose a system, and then build that system in your team. If you're new to the channel, I'm Coach 2K. If you love it, my league, you're going to want to subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified whenever I upload anything new so you don't miss a single NBA 2K video that I put out. And while you're here, be sure and check out my NBA 2K My League expansion series, and I'll put a link in the corner to that. So once you're done with this video, you might want to check that out and see how I play My League. All right, so with that in mind, let's get started and dig into the system proficiency in NBA 2K My League. Okay, the best place to start here is to talk about what system proficiency is all about. Now, if you're new to my league, you'll find this under the coaching tab under system proficiency. And when you pop that up, you're going to get a current rating from one to five stars on. It's kind of an assessment of how everybody fits into the system that the team is running at the moment. Now, a system is essentially a style of play. So when it's your team's identity, so when you're in my league, what you want to think about is what kind of team do you want to be? Do you want to be a defensive oriented team like the Pistons bad boys when Isaiah Thomas played? Do you want to be a run and gun team like Magic Johnson was with his Lakers when they won their championships? Or do you want to be a, a, a triangle offense focused team like the Bulls were with Michael Jordan? So when you're playing my league, it all starts with kind of a vision of what you want your team to look like, installing a system, and then putting the pieces in place to make that system be effective. Now the reason this system proficiency is important is because the better you can mesh all of that together, the better your overall system proficiency, it's gonna to translate to better performance on the court. So you can see here, that in uh, this My League file, the 76ers, their system proficiency is four stars. And it's no surprise that at the end of the regular season, they won 58 games and finished first in the Eastern Conference and got the number one seed. Now on the opposite side, you've got a team like the Chicago Bulls with a two and a half uh, rated system proficiency. And you look at the standings at the end of the year and you can see that they only won 22 games. Uh, you can see that the lack of system proficiency showed up in the performance on the court. Now that doesn't mean that system proficiency is everything. Like here in the case of the Boston Celtics, they finished third in the Eastern Conference with 51 wins. And their system proficiency wasn't much better than the Bulls, it was only three stars. But it's better to have a higher system proficiency than a lower one. So I would think that you wanna at least strive for at least three stars and try and get three and a half to four or more if you can, because that means it'll be that much easier for you to see success on the court. Now, I would think that when your simming games, system proficiency is going to help your team perform better in simulations. Now, obviously, you know, if they're going up against much better players, you know, those players are probably still going to win. But in terms of getting yourself in the best possible situation to win when you're simming games, I think it makes sense to have the highest level of system proficiency. Now, if you're actually playing the games yourself, it probably makes sense to install a system of play that works best with your playing strengths when you're actually playing on the court. Now, if you're a really, really good 2K player, you can probably overcome any system proficiency problems, but it'll just be that much easier to play if everybody's kind of on the same page, so to speak. Now, in NBA 2K My League, you got eight styles of play or systems you can choose to build your team around. The first type of team that you can build is a defensive-minded team. And I always think of the Detroit Pistons here, the bad boys with Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars and Bill Lambeer, where the focus is on making every possession tough. The next type of system is a balanced system. 
And I always think of the Indiana Pacers here because they're always solid, but they're not like super great. So everybody gets involved and they're good on offense and good on defense, but not super great at anything. Next is the grit and grind kind of style. I always think of this, this reminds me of just the Eastern Conference where every game, you know, it used to be a low scoring game. And I think of teams like Pat Riley's Knicks and the Heat where it was just such a slow paced, every possession was a battle. All right, the next system is a pace and space system. It's more of a small ball approach, more indicative of the type of environment NBA teams kind of operate under now, where there's a lot of spacing with three pointers around and trying to drive to the rim and kick to those with a lot of motion. Next up is a more perimeter oriented style with a perimeter centric system. And this is uh, with more of a stretch four or stretch five uh, where your big can play and shoot the three. Uh, examples of this would be like Kevin Durant, Kevin Love, Dirk Nowitzki, Chris Bosh. Uh, and in today's NBA, a perimeter-oriented offense of that has really created some mismatches where traditional bigs just can't even get on the floor. So that's an example of a perimeter-oriented approach to the style of play. Next is a more post-oriented style of play or post-centric system. Uh, examples of this would be uh, when you have a big guy that can really dominate inside like Shaq, Hakeem Olajuwon, and it just creates a double team down low which creates openings out on the perimeter if uh, they don't guard the post player straight up. Next up is the triangle offense approach, the triangle system and this really focuses on the superstar. Best example of the triangle offense was with Michael Jordan when he played with the Bulls and that's an approach that you can install and build your team around. Then the last style of play is the seven seconds or less system. It's focused about getting quick shots, getting up and down the floor. Examples of this would be like Mike D'Antoni's uh, coach teams when he played when he coaches the Suns and today when he coaches the Rockets, it's the seven seconds approach. Once you've decided on the system that you want to play, then you've got to make that your active system. So you can see here, if I wanted the Rockets to be a defensive minded system, then I would make it active by making sure it says active in that green little box. So, but we don't want to do that. We want to put them in the seven seconds or less and keep them there. Now there are three ways to approach kind of developing your vision of your team's identity and putting it together on the floor. Initially what you have to do is look at your current roster and see what works well with the players' talents that you have. So you look at the Rockets here, you can see James Harden who's the franchise player, the best player on the team. He really thrives in the seven seconds or less offensive setup or uh, system and you can see that a lot of the players on the roster really work well in that environment too. So if all of a sudden I was to decide, well, my vision of this team is to be a defensive minded team and I installed a defensive system, well, you can see here that my franchise player is not gonna thrive in that system and neither are a lot of the other players on the team. So the first thing you have to take into account is what works well with the players I currently have and that's the system you probably should start with. Then at that point, what you have to do is evaluate your coaching staff. Is this the right coaching staff for the style of play that's good with the roster that I have? And so you can see here in Houston, his preferred system is seven seconds. He's got a whole roster of guys that that's their preferred way to play. And so it's a good match for everybody. And if your team's doing well that with this approach, then obviously that's the approach you're probably going to want to stick with uh, to have success. But if your team is not doing well, like in the case of the Chicago Bulls, who last year were 22 and 60, this gives you a much greater opportunity to uh, install kind of a different system or a different style of play, a different vision that you might have for the team. 
Now if you got a guy that you can potentially build around on your roster, then it would make a lot of sense to start with that player and see exactly what system he would thrive the most in and build around that system both in a coaching staff and the players that you end up looking for. So you can see here Zach Levine at shooting guard. He's currently in a grit and grind system, but he would actually do a little bit better in pace and space, a perimeter centric offense, or a seven seconds or less offense. And so this would give you some idea, okay, well, maybe this coach isn't the right guy to be coaching Levine going into the future. And let's say that we wanted to decide to build around a pace and space system. Then what we might want to consider doing is bringing in a coach that that's their preferred system and that way Levine and the coach can match and then the focus would be on bringing in players that match both Levine and the coach's preferred system so that everybody matches well a lot like the Rockets do with their seven seconds or less where they were four star in terms of their system proficiency. Now if you look at your roster and there's nobody really that you want to build around, you don't really like the coaching staff, well then that's more of a blank canvas and you can look at that team and go okay we're going to take this team over and uh, this is the type of team that we're going to be and then we're going to hire coaching staff that matches my philosophy and then we're going to go out and look for players that match that style that we want to put on the floor and that makes it a lot easier to go out and focus on the type of players that you want to draft that you want to pick up in free agency and uh, just gives your franchise a lot more focus when you're trying to figure out well what direction do I want to go here you can always go back and say well what kind of system what kind of team do I want to be now once you know what kind of style of play you want to put on the court then it's just a matter of finding the right players that fit into your system for your own players it's pretty simple because from the system proficiency screen you can hit triangle and then you can sort your players by strength in that system and go to each system if you want to do that so you can see okay who would fit well and what kind of system that I'm thinking about. You can also look at free agents in the same system proficiency screen and you can see okay what players are available in free agency that would mesh the best with what I'm going to put on the floor. So you can see here Darren Collison in the grit and grind style if that's what Billy Donovan was going to be if that's what we wanted to do Collison would fit in well with that because he's three stars but a guy like Jeremy Lin not as much of a match so if my only two choices were Collison and Lin for the system that I want to put on the floor then obviously I'm going to want to go with Darren Collison over Jeremy Lin and during free agency you can also get some insight into how certain players will play in the system that you're working with. So you can see here I'm in the moratorium period and there's a column that says system match. So I can sort this by system match and then this gives me a, a list of players who best fit the system that we're trying to put on the floor. You can see Van Fleet, Van Fleet here is four stars for the system that we play. So if I had an opportunity to get Van Fleet or Collison or Lynn I'm going to try and get Van Fleet all day long over those other players because he has the highest match to the system that we're putting on the floor. When it comes to picking players in the draft though, it's a little bit more of a challenge. So you'll just have to kind of scrutinize each of the scouting reports. And you can see here that, you know, this is a situation where Mobley looks like he could be a stretch four of some type. So that might be the best. Uh, indicator that maybe he'd be good in a perimeter centric offense and maybe not somebody I'd want to pick for our team. Alright so that's a good overview of the system proficiency system in NBA 2K. I'm interested to hear from you in the comments whether you focus on the system proficiency in trying to build your teams. Let me know what your favorite system proficiency is and if you got any other tips that I didn't mention. And while you're here, be sure and check out my expansion My League series. I got a lot of episodes in there so you can see how I approach my My League. 
All right, I'm Coach 2K. I'll see you on the court in the next episode.